Auburn has less than 6,000 people. Why does it seem to be so much football talent in a little small town called Warren, Arkansas? Some of the good players, some of the, some of the good high school kids that were kids, you know, they grow up and, and have kids, and those are the players that's good now. And I think, you know, back then, a lot of teams, a lot of colleges weren't looking at Warren. Good lineage. That's what I'm saying. I think we've always, I think we've always had the talent. You know, I just think that a lot of teams weren't looking down there yeah. in South Arkansas. What is it about Bo Hamber? He's had a great program. Warren's been pretty successful in high school football and pretty consistent in high school football for a couple decades now. A lot is due to him. The work he does with the kids, and not only in football. You see, he's the head coach of the basketball team this past year. So just what he does down there from an athletic standpoint is unbelievable and I don't know that there's many guys that can do that or has done that because he's also the athletic director down there so he just does so much for the town and so much for the school and especially football and the kids. When you look at the history there was quite a few wide receivers or a few a handful that went other places in the SEC went to other colleges what was it that interested you in Arkansas and and being a Razorback in your high school career? You know I grew up in Arkansas and this is home. This is, I was about to say, this is my state. I don't want to, you know, claim it. Or no, it's like okay, that, man. But, That's okay. You did enough for the Razorback program. You can say that. I thought about that then. And I thought, you know, it's kind of funny. I actually had a conversation with Joe Adams. We still talk about it to this day. I told him, I said, hey, if you go to Arkansas, I'll go. And we talked also with DeAnthony Curtis and Jim Youngblood. And we said, why would we go anywhere else? How about we stay here in state and, and make our school good? And it's funny, that morning of signing day, you know, signed his letter of intent before me and he signed it to Arkansas so in order to keep my word I signed my letter too and the rest is history. Darius if I remember correctly Joe was originally committed to USC I think yes, when, when Houston got let go and realized that Bobby came in he realized he was going to get some balls thrown to him it might have changed his mind a little bit I would guess. Yes sir he, he definitely he was committed to USC. Since you bring up Joe, I got to talk about this, man. You go highlight after highlight of you guys' touchdowns, whether it's you, whether it's Joe, whether it's Greg. One of the other guys is downfield blocking, and, and that's one of the things that's not talked about enough. Why was that so important to you and the other wide receivers? It was just fun. We just had fun going out being able to play football. Don't get me wrong, we, we practiced very hard and we worked on our conditioning to be able to do that. But now scored or uh, Ronnie scored or Chris scored, you know, it didn't matter who scored. It was it was fun seeing your team score. It was fun winning. It was fun seeing all the fans and the, and the crowd go crazy. Almost more fun watching somebody and celebrating with somebody else than you scoring. But we just took pride in that. Like you say, you can just watch the highlights and see how many – downfield blocks there were and how many guys running to get a block whether it was in 2009 when Greg took that long one against Florida and you're blocking a guy near in the end zone Chris Greg when he blocked downfield against Auburn in 2011 that allowed Joe Adams to get to the end zone. I mean there's so many instances man kind of back to Joe I, I know when you guys were in the combine in 2012 dude you were in the fastest 40 of any SEC player including your teammate Joe Adams did you give him a little hard time about that because I'm sure there was a little bit of competition any guys you anytime you guys faced off in anything we kind of knew our strength we knew I was a fast guy Joe was kind of more of the shiftier guy you know it wasn't really too much crap to give plus Joe if I'm not mistaken Joe had hurt his hamstring and only ran I think maybe once you know I didn't have much to prove as far as speed but I didn't know that I ran the fastest time of anybody in the SEC. That's, uh, that's a good stat to know. Isn't that crazy, man? That's something you can put on your mantle. Yeah, there. Jerry, you played from 2008 to 11. Those four seasons are the exact four seasons Petrino was head coach. Have you ever stopped to consider everything that got built and accomplished, particularly those last two years, to go from a 5-7 and seven program to a program 10-3 and three, and then 11-2 and two, your last two years you think about that transition and really kind of the mountain arkansas is facing uphill right now in this program what went into that to build the program back to the championship level you uh, enjoyed your last two years a lot of blood sweat and tears that's for sure i can honestly say there were times where i didn't know if i wanted to play football anymore it came to that as far as conditioning working out uh, each and every day going to school as a young kid it can kind of be overwhelming not to talk about school but to get back on the football part we worked hard it was hard it, it wasn't easy at all but we worked hard we pushed each other to work hard and we wanted to win like you say, we went 5-7 and seven that freshman year. 
and we all knew that we could have had a better year that year. We knew it was that, that building process. We understood that, so we knew, and we also knew what losing felt like. And we knew this next year we don't want to lose. You know, we don't we don't like the feeling of losing. It was contagious, and the whole team wanted to win. So when we conditioned, we conditioned hard. We ran hard. When we worked out, we worked out hard. Credit to Bobby, one of the best offensive coaches I've ever been around. He put the talent we had with uh, with his brain, and we just lit it up. 2008, we mentioned five and seven, eight and five, and 09. Never ranked in the 09 season. 2010, 13 games went 10 and three. You know how many weeks that team was ranked inside the top 25 that year out of the 13 games? You remember? Five, I think. All of them, every week. Oh. Inside the top twenty in twenty eleven you went eleven and two, six and two in the SEC finished third. You know how many, oh, yeah. you know how many weeks you were ranked inside the top twenty five that season? How many? All of them. <laughs> the point <laughs> is the program in two thousand ten and eleven out of twenty six ball games, you were ranked inside the top twenty one, actually. All of them. And ten of those weeks were inside the or tenth or better. That's a pretty yeah. special time that you were a centerpiece for, man. My senior year, we felt like we should have played in the national championship that year. I feel like we were supposed to beat LSU when we jumped out yeah. 14 at LSU. And remember, that was the same year LSU and Alabama played. And, yeah. Uh, the Hogs were number and, three and, that week, and LSU was number yeah. one. And that was the mm-hmm. week your team had lost your teammate and Garrett Ekman, if I remember all the details right. Yeah, that was a, that was a rough, rough week for us. If we would have beat LSU that day, we would have took that place, and we wouldn't have had to play in the SEC yeah. championship because Alabama would have been playing. And that would have been us. I mean, I know it's history now, but we definitely had an opportunity. I just bring that up, that how special those two years were, because it's a few years ago, but it's a decade ago. It's not a generation ago that Arkansas football was that great. You spent two consecutive years in the top 25. And what do you think it's going to take? I mean, I know blood, sweat, tears, all this, but what's it really going to take for Arkansas to get back to just a resemblance of that? Number one, the right coach. And I think we have that set in place. And I think he got the right coaches around him set in place. You know, a lot of it is you got to have the right coaching and the right teaching and the right guys teaching them the right things. That's in place so far. And I think you have to have the right guys on your team, the right type of leadership. And I think some of the young guys might have to, you know, step up and be the leaders. They don't put an age on leadership. Doesn't matter. I feel like uh, when I stepped in, I always wanted to be a leader. I didn't say a lot. But I tried to show it by example. And I think some of the younger guys, Trey Knox and Traylon Burks, guys like that. And then you got Franks coming in at quarterback who's played, you know, some who has had some SEC experience, you know, with those receivers. I think it could be good for us. I know for sure that defensively we have to get it together. I know Coach Pittman is offensive line guru, so I think we're going to be fine as far as offense and, and up front. But I think you have to get the right type of guys and the right type of leaders. And guys who put it on the line for each other. So that's one of the things. You know, you have to be able to trust each other. You have to be able to look at each other and know that the guy beside you is going to do his job. And I think that just comes with the right type of guys. Speaking with Jerry is right here on the Morning Rush. Glad you brought up Traylon Burks, Warren Guy as well. A lot of comparisons in high school were made to you with his play. What's your relationship like with Traylon Burks? Me and Traylon have a great relationship. I basically watched Traylon grow up as a little kid. Uh, me and his uncle were pretty good friends and hung out a lot uh, each and every day. I got the chance to, to watch him grow up, so it's almost it's almost like he's pretty much family to me. So one of the things that Bo Hembry said, Bobby Petrino said about your own football IQ, Jerry, is it's off the charts. They said that. We've had Tyler in here in studio on the phone multiple times, and he said you ran the most precise routes of almost any wide receiver he's ever played with. How much time today and back then did you spend watching film and really molding your craft? Man, I spent countless hours watching film. That was kind of one of my favorite things to do. I mean, it still is today. Just uh, watching film of of not only just myself, but watching other receivers and how they do things and different things that I can add to my game. And I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm still learning today. Of Sometimes the coaches, were, well, they didn't require us to watch film. They would know if you were in there watching film or not. 
free time in between classes or something like that, I didn't mind going down, watching film, seeing our next opponents, because I always wanted to be the most prepared, not only for practice and knowing coverages and what they're going to try to do. I didn't want to only know what the DBs or what the safeties were doing. I wanted to see what the linebackers were doing. I wanted to kind of recognize blitzes, recognize plays, and I think uh, it kind of helped me out to get the Texas A&M game. A lot of times we knew what, what they were about to do before they even done it. How did you feel about Petrino's management style as a coach? We, we've talked to a lot of players from your era, and looking back on it, a lot of them appreciated the difficult nature and the uncomfortable environment he created. It, they've said it, it set them up and prepared them for tough situations down the road. How did you embrace, how did you deal with the constant barrage that he seemed to bring as a head coach? You know, then I didn't like it. I can honestly say that, you know, then I didn't like it. But now that I'm older and as I've gotten older, I realize he prepared you for everyday life. It was more than football. You know, I didn't realize the big picture at the time. Like they say, he prepared you for rough times. He prepared you for hard times. I know it might sound crazy comparing football to life and things like that, but he definitely made you a tougher person. Definitely has translated over in life. Is there a moment from a practice, a game, a film session, any anything from those four years that stands out to you as, a, oh, th- th- there's my Petrino story? Uh, I don't think I should share any of those. <laughs> We've oh, had... we got the delay on. Wait, this could be good stuff right here. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he'll he'll be too happy. <laughs> uh, I hear you, man. No, we... A decade later, and he's still worried about it. <laughs> Jarris, we've had Tyler tell us stories off there. He doesn't want to say them on there, so I, I understand that yeah. for sure. I never got. I can tell you, I never got as bad as a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. I can I can say that. <laughs> so, Threw the bait out there. I was just seeing if I could reel it in. You know, just know it's things that we don't want kids to hear. Yeah, I understand. Amen, so. amen, man. Jarris, let's talk about this quarterbacks, man. You play with a couple good ones. Ryan Mallett, Tyler Wilson. What was that transition like? You know, it might sound crazy, and even though they they were really different, of course, Ryan threw the ball harder, but, you know, Tyler could spin it too. You could see Ryan throw the ball as, you know, you couldn't see Tyler throw it. Uh, Tyler had a little better touch than Ryan had. But as far as being great quarterbacks, they both excelled at that position, and it was fun to get a chance to play with, uh, with both of those guys. You know, my junior year, we had a healthy Greg. He kind of got a little bit more of the targets. And then our senior year, when Tyler became the quarterback, I don't know if he'll, I don't know if he'll ever admit to this, but I told him, I said, hey, you ever get in trouble, just throw me the ball. <laughs> and I think he lived by it. You mentioned Ryan had a cannon. How many times did you get a finger jam in practice or game? Or did he ever break one of your fingers just running a slant route? Uh, you know, he never broke any of my fingers, but uh, – not to call my receiver coach crazy, but uh, we remember we had Paul Petrino as our receiver coach for a while. Uh, he would shoot them jugs at us pretty hard, so we were used to catching the. Uh, I guess you can say fireballs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing we always brought up with Tyler when he was with us on the show is is the game against A and M that you were a big part of and one of his big days. Anything you remember about that day down in Arlington that was really kind of a show out day for the two of you? I remember I ran a comeback and go, and Tyler underthrew me. I was supposed to have 300 yards that game and another touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> I told Tyler it was okay because, we, you know, that's kind of the first thing to come to my head whenever uh, I think about that day. Yeah. I mean, there's so many memories, man. You can you can talk about 2011 against Texas A&M, Jarius, as Tommy brought up. You just had so many, man, in the bowl game against Kansas State. But I think one of the plays that gets overshadowed a little bit is your catch against Tennessee. I know that Joe had that incredible punt return, but what's going through your and speaking of underthrows, Tyler under three you here there. What's going through your mind as that ball's in the air and you have to catch it off like six juggles and you finally bring it down? You know, initially I'm like, okay, I, I got a. I think it might have been a hit or a fade in the, they press, you know, it's the SEC, so most of the time they press. So I knew when uh, he came up and pressed me, I knew at that point that, okay, I got a chance to get the ball. I knew that Tyler was going to trust me. So when the ball was in the air, initially, okay, I'm like, I got him beat. So I'm like, Where, where's the ball? And the ball hadn't been thrown yet. And I see the ball come out, and it looked short. So I just began to slow down. And next thing you know, it's like, okay. It's one of those balls you like, okay, it's either going to hit off the back of his head or, you know, it's going to sneak through. And most likely I'm, I might drop it. <laughs> kind of went laser focused. You know, I actually got my hand on it and tipped it up. 
And the first time I took up, I'm like, okay. It is crazy because this whole moment I'm talking to myself and it's going in slow motion, even though it's really, you know, fast motion, moving really fast. So I'm just going through in my head, okay, I'm about to catch it now. I bring it in and it hits off my face mask. Initially, go. And that's the first time I actually just went into panic mode. Is, is when the ball hit off my face mask. So it's like at that point, I'm like, oh, oh where, where it go? And I see it, like I said, still in slow motion. I just see it fall into the ground. It's like, well, let me give this last diving effort. And I dove for it, and I just came up with it. All right, Jarius. Jarius, right with us here on the Morning Rush. Jarius, before we let you go, man, I know you, you and Greg, you guys like to fish a little bit. What's your go-to fishing spot here in Arkansas? Well, now uh, I stay on on a lake here in North Rock, so I just usually fish here now. Kind of getting getting a little older, <laughs> so I just fish in the backyard now. What kind of fish do you catch out there, Jarius? Brim, some bass. You know, I like to catch all types of fish. Jarius Ride, former Arkansas Razorback, current NFL free agent. Jarius, I appreciate you carving out some time for us this morning, man. Oh yeah, for sure.